sorry, a bit late. I can't find the bloody dog. Anyway, hello. Uh, it's the birthday of circus. Who doesn't want to celebrate that? Huh? Well, people who have colorophobia, which is fear of clowns. It is rare, but out of respect, I am not wearing a red nose today. Actually, the truth is my wife and I couldn't find anything to make one, so I'm just going to have to carry on drinking and let one develop naturally. I love the circus. Uh, years ago, I used to make clown shoes, and that was no small feat. It's an old joke. I love an old gag, although to be honest, I have to say some of the topical ones do fade a bit. So like a good gag about the Kaiser, for example, which made people sob just before the First World War, is hard to sell these days. Uh, the Kaiser has taken umbrage. What? Umbridge Wells? Yeah. Uh, the circus, however, has been going strong for more than 250 years. It was today, in 1768, that Philip Astley staged the very first modern circus in what are probably now the grounds of St Thomas's Hospital in London. Uh, he started the whole thing in a field called Hapenny Hatch with his wife, Patty Jones. Uh, they did trick riding on horses. I know a lot about Philip, but as is the way of history, I know absolutely nothing about Patty except she was married to Philip and she can't have been too shabby on a horse. So it turns out uh, circus rings are round because anybody deciding to stand on the back of a horse finds it easier to race round in a circle. It's something to do with centrifugal force, at which point I lost interest. Anyway, there's only so much equine excitement people can take and presumably, I don't know, the horses needed to come off every now and then for a drink of water. So uh, Philip started putting on acrobats and jugglers to keep the crowd from drifting off. Uh, then clowns were added to fill in the gaps. I love that the esteemed profession of comedy is basically a gap filler. So in my beloved book of days, uh, Robert Chambers writes about Philip Astley, uh, but uh, he doesn't do so until much later in the year. Today he does, however, talk about comedy, and he does so in the shape of Joe Haynes, who died today in 1701. Uh, so Joe is listed in here as an actor, singer, dancer, guitar player, fortune teller, and author. It's the kind of portfolio career many of us long for. Indeed, I think if we stay in isolation much longer, I plan to extend my skill set into the fortune telling business. I, I think I may have a knack for it. I firmly predict that when the history of the intelligentsia is written, Donald Trump will not have a listing. I love Joe Haynes. Uh, he does seem to have been bright. He went to Oxford and, like myself, could have had the sort of career to make his parents proud. So he got a job as Latin secretary to Sir Joseph Wilkinson, who was Secretary of State. This is not a job which has ever occurred to me. Latin secretary. I love Latin. It's the only language about which a teacher can say to a student, your skill is declining, and mean that as a compliment. So apparently, Joe Haynes, future comedian, lost his Latin secretary gig because he couldn't keep a secret which, in the Secretary of State business, turns out to be key. Out of work, he decided to be a comedian. It's a story which I have heard often in the backstage chatter of the frankly directionalist but professionally funny men and women that I know. So Joe went on to find fame and fortune at the Drury Lane Theatre, where Chambers says he was the first to introduce, and I'm going to quote here, the absurd but mirth-provoking performance of delivering a speech from the back of an ass on the stage. Really? I mean, I've checked this out, and it turns out this was a fairly popular method of raising a laugh with an audience. Why the hell it fell out of favour, I have no idea. I mean, there are plenty of asses in show business. So I knew I had read about Joe Haynes somewhere else, and I remembered that he is mentioned uh, in this marvellous book about the art of slapstick, <laughs> which I just hit myself in the face with. Uh, I love a bit of physical comedy. Uh, I've, rarely ra I've rarely laughed more. Uh, my wife's laughing. I've rarely laughed more uh, than when Boris Johnson got stuck on a zip wire. So topical jokes may fade, but the joke that lasts through the generations is anything which involves other people falling over. As I'm sure we're all discovering, uh, you can waste hours of life watching innocent folk career to the ground on the internet as gravity defeats their best intentions. Uh, the comedy of misfortune has been around for as long as people have been forced to live together. 
So I learned in here nearly 3,000 years ago, the Greeks were splitting their togged sides at professional fools called mimi or mimi. And you find examples in early Chinese and Hindu performances, and even among the Hopi Indians and the indigenous people of Papua New Guinea. Now the Romans loved a pantomime, and medieval kings and queens couldn't do without a jester. Actually, you're probably imagining that these motleyed fools were all boys, but not so. Uh, Mary, Queen of Scots, jester was a woman, a French woman called Nicola. Apparently she was the queen of banter, but none of her wit has survived. All we have is a list of the money that was spent on her clothes. Uh, thus, I can tell you that in 1564, she was given a blue velvet bonnet. Yeah, so much of history is down to what accountants thought necessary to record, and they don't tend to write down the punchlines. Uh, then there was Madame Dore, who performed hilariously at the inauguration of the Order of the Golden Fleece in Bruges in 1429, and Jane the Fool, who raised laughs in the mid-16th century as court jester to the Queen's Catherine Parr, and Mary I, and possibly uh, also to Anne Boleyn. Uh, as far as I know, she's possibly the only female court jester ever depicted. You might see her in a few paintings. How I would love to go and watch something knockabout right now, or indeed anything at the theatre. I can't believe they're all closed. Although, I mean, it's not the first time. Uh, the Puritans, who were frankly no fun at all, uh, closed all English theatres in 1642, so the public had to be entertained instead in the street and at market fairs. In fact, much of modern comedy comes from the Italian improvised tradition known as Commedia dell'arte, uh, which involved a lot of physical mucking about, so much so that you didn't actually need to understand the language to get the joke. Uh, in the late 17th century, there were whole troops of these Italian entertainers who were very popular in London, although not everybody was a fan. One uptight English critic wrote that they were fit only to lift up a loud laughter and nothing else. As if that wasn't enough. Anyway, Philip Astley, king of the circus ring, died of gout. So maybe the drinking thing till my nose is red is not a good idea. How I'd love to have seen Joe Haynes on an ass. I've done some physical comedy in my time, although it's possible I'm, I'm more comfortable with something a little bit more bookish. Uh, oh, try this one. Uh, Cicero is speaking in the Roman Forum, and all the senators are listening, and as one senator turns up late, and as he slips into his seat, he whispers to another one, what's Cicero talking about? I don't know, replies the other senator. He hasn't got to the verb yet. It's a good, it's a good joke. It's a, I think, okay, it might, might work better in Latin, that joke. Anyway, if you're having a tough time, remember this. Caesar... Si viveret ad rimum dereris. If Caesar were alive, you'd be chained to an oar. Curiae esto benignus. Take care. Be kind. That's what I cut there, darling. Thank you so much. Um, uh, I just want to show you, have you seen, because I was talking about those things, have you seen that video where the baby penguin falls over a rock? It's really hilarious.